Hi everyone, this is Jennifer Beamer, owner operator of Expertly Dyed Art by Science. And in this video, we are going to learn what to do when you run out of fiber. <laughs> so uh, this was actually the hardest thing for me when I first started learning how to spin is how do I attach more fiber without it falling apart? Um, my biggest problem was it would either be a really fat spot or the overlap wouldn't be enough and the yarn would just draft apart at that spot. Um, so I will show you as best as I can how to prevent this from happening. Um, but part of it is just doing it a billion times and then finally figuring out how to make a join such that it stays together and is imperceptible to anyone looking so they won't be able to see where you joined the fiber together so we're going to still do our park and draft method so I'm going to load this up with some extra twist shove it under my arm and then I'm going to draft basically to the point just before the fiber ends okay and it looks like I'm going gonna, gonna to need a little bit more because there's not enough there's not enough twist here for me it would be a very weak yarn I think if I didn't add more twist. So I'm going to do that, park it under my arm, draft out a little bit more. Now the key to making a smooth and unnoticeable, um, oh you know, I'm, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to shorten this a little bit so it's easier for me to work with and for you to see. Okay, so I'm going to do a close-up of this real quick too because I was looking at my last video and it's kind of it's kind of hard to see. So it's up there. It's up there in the notch. Then I'm gonna take my oh let's get back at the frame here. I'm gonna take my thumb, go under once and under one more time, and this part is going to go whoop, around the hook. Oh, where's the camera? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Ta-da! <laughs> So it's going to go around the hook like that. I'm going to just hold the hook to keep it from escaping. I'm going to pull it tight like this. If you can't figure out a half hitch, it's okay. It took me forever to figure this out. So if you're having a hard time, you can just wrap the fiber or the yarn around the hook a few times. This is what I used to do. I would just, I would just take it and go wrap, wrap. And this holds it pretty well. Um, it's not great but it will still hold the yarn fairly well. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe you can Google half hitch and there's better instructions than mine. <laughs> anyway, so I'm at the end here. Okay, So what I'm going to do is, do you see how it's kind of fat right here? It's kind of fat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out the ends of the fiber here a little bit to make it really, really thin. This is really thin. Okay, and Then I'm going to pinch off the twist from the yarn so it doesn't get caught in there. Now this is the new piece I'm going to add and I want this end to match this end so that when I overlap them it won't be a big fat spot. So remember the staple length for this fiber is about two and a half or three inches so you want to overlap at least half the length. Okay, That will give you a nice, a nice join. Okay, So I've overlapped it a little bit Add some more spin. I should really make a bloopers video because, you know, a lot of times I, I just fail miserably my first three attempts, so I get frustrated and decide to do it again. So I let go of the twist with my uh, left hand here, and I have this still pinched so it doesn't get into my fiber supply. Um, and then I'm just going to hold this here. Now, my join, the end of my join is actually right here. So I'm just going to hold it up a little bit further, pinch, and then you can see I have made a join that looks just like the rest of my yarn. You can't even really see where I joined it, but it was right around here. That's where I made the join. So um, let's do that again. I'm going to shorten this a little bit so it's easier for you to see. And sometimes you'll find um, in your fiber there's something that you don't like about it there's a rough spot or a nubby piece of fiber that you don't want and you take it off you pull off the piece that you don't like 
and then um, you know you continue uh, spinning by rejoining the fiber. I do that all the time. So um, just gonna get this back down to the end here, and you see there's actually a little piece in here I don't like. Pull it out. I don't like that piece. So. I want to thin out these fibers at this end. These need to be thin. If you don't thin it out, it's going to be a big thick spot. And thick spots do not like twist, right? So the thin spots get a lot of twist, the thick spots don't. So if you have a really thick spot, it's not going to hold together as a very good join. And then with this side, I'm going to draft this a little bit thin. And I'm going to overlap again let the twist travel into my join like so and there we go we have another join and you almost cannot tell at all where I made that join add a little bit more spin park it under my arm and I'm just gonna keep going like as if this was one big continuous piece of wool alright like that see and then I, and then I have some yarn Yay! <laughs> so if you found this video useful, please like it, share it, send it around the internet. Let other people know about me. Subscribe to my channel. Follow me on Twitter and check me out on Facebook. I will be opening up in my Etsy shop soon. I just need to figure out the logistics of the shipping. <laughs> I know this sounds like a broken record because like six videos I did in a row talked about me figuring out the shipping. But in Korea, it's not as easy as you would like it to be. Um, although, they make the shipping boxes super cheap. You can get this huge, like, 20 pound box for, like, $1.25. <laughs> and that's not, that's not even with a wholesale account or anything. So, it's, it's actually kind of nice. Um, but I might be hooking up with a friend in the United States where she'll be able to ship all of my orders from Etsy from where she's at, which would be fabulous. <laughs> I'm really excited about that idea. If not, I'm going to figure out how to do deals with shipping and orders over a certain amount so that I don't, you don't kill yourself on all this extra shipping. Because believe me, I do not want to pay $20 in shipping for something that cost me $8. <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to do some troubleshooting videos for drop spindles later, but hopefully these first few videos that I posted about learning to spin with a drop spindle will be useful for you. And if you have problems or questions, be sure to comment below or send me a message because I absolutely understand having problems with spinning and not knowing how to fix it. Especially if you learned with someone and then you go home and you're like, oh gosh, <laughs> how do we do this again? <laughs> so, totally been there. Anyway, so, learn to spin with a spinning wheel will be coming soon, but I have to get that all set up and I have to have my husband here. He is currently at work this morning. So, um, yeah, I need, I need help with uh, the setup just to make sure that you guys can see what it is that I'm doing. Anyway, so, long story short, subscribe. <laughs> Bye.